Hi there, thanks for joining my demo of the production order functionality of SAP Business One. This is Chelsea Lemaire with Enmer Technologies. For today's demo, I'm gonna focus in the production module here, but we'll also touch on the resources module and a little bit on the MRP module as well. So production orders in SAP are built based using um, some what we call master data. So if I open up a production order, for example, I can see that um, the production order is made up of bills of materials. Bills of materials are defined in the system. For example, I set up a, a uh, bill of materials for our former demo for you guys um, for a recessed oval bowl with dripless edge. So the bill of materials contains item master data. It also contains resource master data and different route stages. So this is my material. This is marble white vein on white at a particular size, and then my different resources. So I have machines and I have labor. I can set up the items in the system using item master data. These are the physical items that get consumed in the production process. And similarly, I can set up resources in the system. For example, this is a machine. I can say how much it costs me to run an hour of this machine. I can tie this machine to my fixed asset module. So if I'm managing fixed assets um, and depreciating my machines, et cetera, they can be tied together. And I can also do things like define machine capacity. So how many hours a day do I have available to run? And this will allow me to plan capacity and to um, you know, manage my production schedule in a way that is realistic. So this, there's a machine resource and you can see there's machine type, but I also have labor resources. So I can define, you know, how much does it cost for one hour of this type of labor? Capacity planning um, of, you know, eight hours a day, Monday through Friday, do we work on um, Saturdays and Sundays, et cetera, daily capacities, single run capacity, et cetera. So, I can set up my resources, I can set up my materials, and I can set up my different route stages. And then I define a bill of materials, which when I go to create a production order, and I select the item that I'm trying to build, it will pull that bill of materials into the production order itself. Now in SAP, there's a few different ways that a production order can be generated. The first way is what I'm showing you right now. It's what I call an ad hoc production order. I'm manually going in, opening up a production order from scratch and saying, what item do I want to create? I select the item uh, code or name on the header. It's gonna pull in that bill of materials, that recipe card for me, but I can manually update everything on the lines. So I can add additional materials. I can add different route stages. If you know, I find for this particular item, I also need one of these items to be consumed. And you know this, I need more materials than I typically would. I can update that here. If for whatever reason, I think it's gonna take longer than the standard amount of time. Um, now these are all based on the recipe that's defined on the bill of materials. So to create one of these, this is the expected time and materials that would be used to create one. If I created, if I say, you know what, I'm gonna create two of these, the amounts, adjust accordingly, but I can still manually override and adjust for each individual production order, which is helpful for you guys because I do know each production order is unique, each item is unique. I've added the specification, specifications tab for you guys. So you can, these are all user-defined fields that are specific to Virginia Marble. For this work order, I can define the length, the width, the bowl type, any other attributes that you want to input for this item. And we can make sure that these specifications print out on any job travelers to the floor, et cetera. So creating a production order ad hoc, this is how you do it. Manually open a production order, select the item. You can manually um, adjust the line items, put your specifications in there, et cetera. So now I have a planned production order. Another way that production orders get created is by using what's called the MRP wizard. So the MRP wizard looks at all sources of supply and demand in the system, 
and it generates recommendations for what you need to produce and buy to fulfill the needs across the organization. So for our previous demo, I set up a demo scenario for you guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run through that one. Um, my planning horizon, what items do I want to consider that I'm planning for? I want to run it across the whole company. What do I wanna consider as my, my sources of supply and demand? So purchase orders, sales orders, production orders, minimum inventory levels, et cetera. I want all that considered. So when I run this wizard, it's telling me, okay, in order to fulfill my needs for the items that I've selected, I need production, a couple of production orders and I need several purchase orders. So I'm short on materials and I need to create a couple of production orders. Typically, the production orders that are created from the MRP wizard are for make to stock items or they're for sub assemblies of top level production orders that have already been generated against a sales order. So when a customer creates a sales order that needs a specific production order, that production order would be generated directly from the sales order. And then when we run the MRP results or the MRP wizard, it's gonna see that open production order and say, okay, we have sub assemblies or we have additional things that we need to purchase to fulfill that top level production order that's tied to the sales order. So my MRP wizard is telling me, these are all my either make to stock items or sub assemblies or purchased items that I need to create purchase orders for. So I can use that MRP order recommendations and say, I just wanna see production orders from this scenario. And I can see, okay, I've got two production orders that need to be generated. So I can have you know hundreds of production orders here, depending on how uh, complex my MRP scenario, how high volume your transactions are. But I can, from this screen say, plan my release date, my due date. It's filling in defaults, but I can override that. I can update the quantities, et cetera. And then I can, select all, and when I update, it will generate those production orders for me. So that's the second way to generate a production order. The third way to generate a production order is what I alluded to before, is a customer specific, sales order specific, um, produce to order type production order. We want this production order tied directly to the customer sales order. It's a make to order type order. Well, let's go ahead and look at the Let me find the one that I created for you guys previously. Here we go. So this sales order here, um, I created for you guys during our previous demo. It's for a recessed oval bowl with dripless edge. And when I create this sales order, I have the option to procure non-dropship items. So if I select that option, when I click update, it's going to up, uh, open up what we call the procurement confirmation wizard. And this will create a make to order production order tied directly to this sales order. So now production order number 418 was generated for this sales order. So when I open up that production order, I can see that it is already automatically tied to my customer sales order here. So three different ways to create production orders. On the fly ad hoc from the MRP wizard, which is for more make to stock or sub assembly type items. And then um, from the sales order itself, the procurement confirmation wizard, um, which will generate a customer order specific production order, usually at the top level for top level items. So once we have this production order, what do we do with it? So in the system, if we're going to manage our production inside of SAP Business One without a shop floor data collector, 
um, I'm going to walk you through those steps. Now, be aware that I have included the production shop floor data collector in your estimate, and I will send you guys a demo video of that piece separately. But for today's demo, I'm just showing you how to manage the production inside of Business One. So this is the native manual way to handle it. So the first thing is um, my production orders, when you, they're created, they're in the plan status. So I can continue to update them. I can work on the start date and due date. I can say, how do I want to calculate this? End date backwards, start date forwards, on start date, on end date, et cetera. And it can automatically schedule and plan based on capacity. Once I'm ready to start working on this order, I can move this production order to released. I can also use the open items list in the system. to see my open production orders. And I can say, here's all of the planned production orders in the system, and I want to release these. And I can release them all at once, or I can also cancel in batch. So I don't have to release them all at once. I know you guys have a pretty high volume production orders, so you know doing these one at a time might seem tedious. You can do it in mass. Right. I'm going to release this production order to the shop floor. So now, once it's released, it would be visible on that shop floor data collector that I alluded to earlier. So if they're on a terminal or a handheld device out there, they see this production order um, with the scheduled due date, et cetera, and they can start working on it as needed. I can also use inside of the system the calendar view to kind of get a overview of my production schedule. So I'm using this calendar view here that was previously set up, the manager production overview, um, and it shows me all of the production orders that are scheduled for this month. Now you guys might be um, a lot more, uh, there might be high volume production orders here, so you don't have to see it at the month view. I can also see it at the week view, work week, or even a daily view, and tasks, etc. So um, I can view it in different ways, but the good thing about this calendar view is it gives you an over, overall view of all the production orders, and I can drill into these production orders by double clicking. I can also click and drag. So if this one is scheduled at the same time as this one and I want to move it to tomorrow, or if I want to expand it and make it longer or shorter, I can do that. So you do have that click and drag scheduling functionality from this calendar view. So once I've got my production orders planned and scheduled and released to the shop floor, if I'm not using a production data collector, what we would do is come into SAP Business One as often as you want and say, okay, I need to issue my materials to this work order. I want to consume any of the manual materials or manual resources that I've defined here. If you guys have it set up on a back flush capacity where once it's received and once the order is completed, we just want all the materials and labor and um, machine resources to back flush, we can set that up as well. But for this, um, for this scenario, I've set everything to manual. So I'm gonna right click on this production order and say issue my components. From here, I can say, do I just wanna do it for the first routing stage? Or do I want to do for all routing stages? Do I want to do it just for the items, the materials that I'm issuing? Or do I want to do materials and resources? I'm going to say I want to do items and resources, and I want to do it for all three stages. So for what I'm saying for this particular example is I'm doing all of my issuing at the end. So I've already gone through all my route stages. I've performed all of my labor. I've consumed all materials. I want to do everything at one time. So when I click OK, it pulls up a list of everything that I'm planning to issue for production. And again, at this point, because it's manual, these are the planned quantities, but I have the option to update. So I was supposed to use one of these, but we actually used two. And it was supposed to take this machine 0.5 hours. It actually took an hour. This technician took a little bit longer than we expected. So 
So I can update the quantities here and record the actual amounts that were issued for production. And it's asking me for batch numbers because I set up this item as a batch manage. So now I've issued my components to production and I can see by looking at this screen, my planned quantities and my actual issued quantities. So my planned quantity, I actually issued two, I actually issued 1.5, et cetera, from the screen. So I've issued my components. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna receive report completion. So I'm reporting my planned quantity. I'm supposed to receive one finished good here, quantity of one, and I did. I'm gonna say, yep, I produced one. What is my serial number? So I set up this item for you guys to be serialized I don't know if that's realistic in your actual scenario, but this item is going to ask for a serial number. What is the serial number on this processed oval bowl that we just created? Okay. So now I have issued my materials. I have received my finished goods. And if I go to my summary tab, I can see that it's starting to calculate the cost of this job. Based on the item costs that I've put in on this demo data, actual item component cost, actual resource component cost, actual product cost, and my total variance here, okay? Total production runtime, all of that is being calculated based on the information that I'm entering into the system. So once I've issued all my components and I've received all my finished goods, the final step is to close this production order. And this is typically done by a production manager or a scheduler, somebody who's responsible for saying, yes, this job has completed um, and we want to close it. And what that will do is post the variance to the general ledger. So when I update, now this production order is closed. You'll no longer see it on the schedulers. And you can see my total variance has been posted. I now have a journal entry that shows me my variances and what was posted to the general ledger. Um, just like we saw in the accounts receivable and the accounts payable demo, if you watch those, there is a relationship map associated with the production order. So I can see, if I wanna look at this production order and say, um, you know, where did it start out? It's based on this sales order. And I, if I wanna drill in and see, okay, what was actually used for this production order and what was received from the production order, I can use the relationship map to drill into that base information. And I can even drill all the way down to the journal entry that was posted from that issue for production or from that receipt from production. Okay. So that is a high level overview of how production orders are managed inside of SAP Business One. Again, um, your estimate does include a production shop floor data collector, meaning that your production team wouldn't need to log into SAP to issue materials, to record finished goods, to record time, et cetera. They'll do that from the shop floor. Um, I'll include a separate demo of that production data collector, but I just wanted to show you guys how it can be done inside of SAP using the native functionality. Please let me know if you have any other questions around the production module and I'd be happy to set up any other follow-up demo. Thanks so much.